From the mountains of central British Columbia to you listening around the world, this, my friends, is Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. We welcome you to tonight's show, including Kingdom of Nye Radio and Revolution Radio. If you want to take a listen to our archives, they are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, do a little shopping at the SOR vault. Grab a great book from We Read the Night. Join the Space Travelers for five bucks a month, and Captain Shirk has you all up to date on the SOR Newswire. Tonight's show is brought to you by Chive Charities. Help make the world 10% happier by donating to Chive Charities today. You can find them on our website. Dr. Claude Swanson is an MIT and Princeton educated physicist. He has worked as a conventional applied physicist for more than 20 years and has conducted extensive research into the physics of the paranormal. Dr. Swanson's latest book, Science of the Soul, The Afterlife and the Shift, addresses some of the deepest questions every human being asks. Do we have a soul? Does it live forever? What happens after we die? And if there is a heaven, where is it? Dr. Swanson analyzes these questions scientifically and finds some overwhelming evidence that the soul and the afterlife are very, very real. His website is synchronizeuniverse.com. Then at the bottom of hour number three, I will bring you the SOR Newswire brought to you by Paranoia Magazine. Dr. Swanson, welcome to Spaced Out Radio for the first time. What a pleasure to have you here. Hi, Dave. Great to be here. Thank you. No, thank you for coming on in. I got to ask... As an Ivy League graduate and a man of science, how the heck do you get involved with the paranormal? <laughs> well, I, 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 it's not something that you start out planning, you know. Um, I think that my real love was science. I wanted to know the truth of how the universe really works. <clears throat> and I think... Uh, one thing I noticed in my courses uh, and the, the, so the so so-called leading edge of science is a lot of our theories are really kind of based on experiments and observations. They don't really go, they don't stem from a really deep understanding or a deep theory. Einstein was special in that he had one or two really deep ideas and he could, he made theories that, uh, were coherent in a way, and you explained some things. But in general, our science tends to be empirical, which means it's, it's driven by observation and data, and they make the theory afterwards to try to cobble together something that can explain what they just saw in the lab. It's not very coherent. Uh, the other problem is that if they don't believe that a, something can happen, uh, then they won't be looking for it, and it'll never enter into the theory. So a lot of our science uh, has a, kind of developed some inertia, I would say, uh, over the years, uh, that if government doesn't, doesn't fund research into certain areas, those areas don't get explored, and the physics doesn't really fill out to account for those things. So the, all that's just a long-winded way of saying that I thought I understood the world when I got my PhD. You know, they, they, they said, you think you have passed all the courses, studied all the different phenomena and the theories and the forces, and you think you know them. And then you hit the real world, and you began beginning encountering things that they had not prepared me for from graduate school or from college. And one of those things for me was remote viewing. Uh, and I was very curious about the universe. I wanted to know the truth. And when I was doing government consulting in the 80s, I began hearing rumors about something called remote viewing. And it sounded to me as though this was something real, and it was far more accurate than you would ever expect. It should be impossible by our Western physics. And yet it didn't sound like it was impossible. It sounded like it was something real. And that got me started to look into what else goes on in the universe that doesn't does not fit with our conventional western science and that is how this whole uh, journey began 
Were you a religious man growing up? Did you have religious beliefs? Uh, I did. Uh, I grew up in a small town in the south, in southern Virginia. You might call it the Bible Belt. My mother was religious and took us to church, and uh, I, I, you know, pretty much accepted the conventional religion uh, that we were taught until I was about twelve or so. But I began thinking for myself and began asking questions, and also looking for proof. Like, where is the proof of of God, of, of miracles, of things like that, and I didn't see anything very powerful to support that. And so my, at the same time, I was learning about science, and it be, so science sort of became my religion. I think that happens with lots of Westerners, that the explanation of the universe, you begin uh, taking over the scientific view instead of the relig- religious view, and uh, science offers a way to explain things. You have the Big Bang, and um, you know you have various theories that can explain how things are, evolution, whether the way they are. So I, I became a, a scientoid, you know, I became, I became a sort of a, an acceptance of that belief system, uh, which is very disappointing if you are raised religious because uh, suddenly the afterlife and all these other wonderful things about religion uh, are taken away. You can't believe in it if you... Uh, if you ad- adopt the scientific attitude, it just says it's all it's all matter. It's just matter. And when you die, there's nothing nothing more. It's all dust to dust. And that's kind of a sad world, but that's where you're left logically. And that's where I was left for probably 30 years until I came across remote viewing. And then I began learning other phenomena that also don't fit our Western scientific paradigm. And I'm talking about... Uh, ESP and psychokinesis, which is mind over, over matter, um, and a bunch of other phenomena like that, uh, the, the out-of-body experience, for example, which is very, very, uh, on a very firm experimental uh, basis now. But um, at the time, that's not something you're taught in school. They never mention those things in your physics courses. But when I began investigating it, I found that there is a subset of scientists who do research on these subjects, and the uh, experiments are very hard and very reliable. And they say that there is a an, another, a, a, a different kind of energy, an energy that has to do with consciousness, and that it survives death, that that energy can exist outside the body. When people have out-of-body experiences or near-death experiences, They find themselves outside of their physical body, but their center of consciousness is where they are. That's that's their center of awareness. They can look back at the body, float around, float up up into the room, listen to other conversations, and when they come back into body, they can remember what they saw. So there's something else besides the physical body, and it's that that's sort of the first step in exploring. What else is left out of Western science? And I guess the past 30 years, I've been trying to understand what else there is, what's left out, these extra energies that are connected to consciousness and how it's possible they can exist and how we can expand or extend our present science to include these energies. Uh, And that's how you get to the afterlife. This is how I got there in a natural progression but I first started with my first book, Synchronized Universe, just putting together the hard evidence for about 10 different types of paranormal phenomena, for which we have very good evidence, things like levitation, that totally violate Western science, and yet they appear to be totally real. So it says there's something else that's been left out. And the second book is called Life Force, and in that book I try to actually understand scientifically what is this force, what is this energy, uh, and it's been known for thousands of years. Uh, the Chinese call it qi. They use it in healing. They use it in fighting. Um, the, 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 the Hindus call it prana, and they use it as part of their mystical practices as well. Uh, it's, it's known all over the world, uh, and yet our Western science has ignored it, and that's this extra energy 
that uh, the Russians call torsion, and I discovered it in my research and writing my second book, and uh, it's the key, I think, to understanding the afterlife and paranormal phenomena. Now, had you ever had paranormal experiences growing up, whether it's ghosts or, or any other type of phenomena? Um, I really didn't. Uh, I, I was. I had kind of a boring life. I kind of, I kind of believed in the, the worldview that I was taught, and um, I didn't go off looking for things like that. I think my mother was probably kind of. My mother might have had some. She was kind of scared of the stuff, and she didn't want us to watch uh, the, the scary shows on TV, the the Outer Limits, or uh, things like that, um, and. Uh, but I, I never had anything like that. So for me, it was mostly intellectual uh, reading the research. Once I began delving into it, I began meeting other people who had lots of experiences. And then I would go off and do research at haunted houses uh, and graveyards and things like that. And then I, then I had some experiences then at that point. But usually by that point, I had a, you know, I had a, a tape recorder and a, and a, and a, flash camera and a few other instruments with me. So I would, my, my excuse was I was being a scientist, but, um, it was a very different attitude. I really wanted to understand the objective reality of these other forces. Uh, one, one example, um, I had a bunch of friends who were all much more sensitive psychically than I was, and we would go off to things like, um, like, a, like a great graveyard, for example, a graveyard or cemetery, and um, set up a strobe light there uh, with the camera. <clears throat> and what you find when you do that, uh, and the strobe was able to flash periodically uh, in the dark, uh, the darkness of the cemetery, and every so often, little orbs show up when the flash goes off. You can see little round spheres, uh, a couple inches in diameter, that show up in different positions when the flash occurs, which uh, is a confirmation. These orbs are one manifestation of the paranormal, if you want to call it that. They're a manifestation of the spirit world. You encounter them in studying the afterlife. Uh, it's, it's how people appear when they are out of body. It's the soul, if you like, the spirit mind of the individuals. And when that flash goes off, they can become visible. So, um, you know, I've done experiments like that, but um, to to me, there's so much more that has been done by others. And so in my third book, I really delved into uh, all of the research by all the people I could track down who had done research over the past hundred years or more who have been investigating the afterlife. And I found an amazing amount of evidence of, of the afterlife and of the nature of what life is like for us when we're no longer in the physical. And uh, so that's when you start digging into it and, and look at all the different kinds of data, it's, it's amazing how much is there. I got to ask you in regards to a scientific standpoint, whether it's life after death, whether it's the paranormal, whether it's anything that is a little bit fantastic, shall we say, why do you think mainstream science has such a hard time jumping on this bandwagon to figure out whether or not these phenomena are real and happening today? Um. That's a good question. Uh, as as you probably know, uh, about a hundred years ago, when quantum physics was first being discovered, uh, scientists like Schrödinger and Bohr uh, discovered that human consciousness interferes with quantum experiments. So the most basic quantum experiment is you're uh, sending a beam of electrons through a, a plate that has two little holes in it. And they can go through either through one hole or the other, and what comes out is an interference pattern, which is a possibility of either hole, you know, going through one or the other or both. Right. And so you get an interference pattern, a pattern of waves on the far side of the experiment. 
Um, this also happens with light. Uh, the waves interfere, and you get a rippling pattern on the backside of the experiments. And scientists discovered early on that if you observe the experiment, if you try to look at it and determine which hole the photon or the electron went through, that that actually disturbs the experiment and the interference pattern disappears. And that will happen even if your consciousness is trying to observe which hole it goes through. So uh, Dean Radin uh, did an experiment uh, recently in which he found that even if I have some like remote viewers or psychics who are trying to just remote view which hole the particle goes through, even that will disturb the interference pattern and the rippling pattern will disappear. So the mind, the human mind, uh, interferes with quantum physics. It affects quantum physics. And so what that tells you is that we, our minds, our consciousness, is intertwined with quantum physics and therefore with the entire universe, everything that happens. So when you think about something, you're actually affecting that thing. And that means that consciousness needs to be part of physics. It sh I should have had a course. Everyone should in the mind and consciousness and how that fits in with the forces of electromagnetism and gravity, etc. But that's not taught in physics. Physics has never settled down and tried to develop a theory of consciousness or published it or taught it or even acknowledged it. Um, and so this is you know, like a huge oversight in mainstream Western science. And so you're asking why, and that's a good question. Uh, it could be uh, one theory is that maybe religion is part of it, that religious um, structures and, and institutions uh, feel like you're intruding too much in their territory when, <laughs> when you start trying to use science to describe these things. So maybe there's some political pushback um, I, I don't know. It's a good question, uh, but uh, it strikes me as uh, this is the biggest uh, scientific unknown right now is how consciousness can be in integrated with our theory of science. It affects, it, it affects gravity. It affects quantum physics. It affects everything. And um, pretty much we're, we're in this strange, um, a strange state in our country, in our, in our world, where we don't include consciousness. And uh, it's, it's high time we, d we did. So I've been trying to do that in my work. Um, and one way is by looking at cases where consciousness is really powerful, where it makes a big difference, and you can see its effects. And that's one way, then, of getting a handle on how to explain consciousness. Um, and this energy that I mentioned before that the Chinese call qi, uh, the Russians call torsion, I think is one of the keys. My second book, Life Force, is focused on that energy. And what you find is that some people are able to concentrate this energy in very powerful ways. These qi gong masters in China, for example, they learn to manipulate this energy. They it travels through the acupuncture meridians of their body. Uh, they eject it from the acupoints. Uh, there's an acupoint in the, the center of the palm of each hand, which is a, an important one. There's also acupoints on the top of the head and then the brow chakra. All the chakras that we know about from uh, Eastern religion, those are acupoints also. And this energy can come in and out from those points and influence the world around it. Um, so Qigong masters, I have experiments uh, where they can uh, slow down radioactivity, they can speed up radioactivity, they can bend laser beams, and they can do this from hundreds or thousands of miles away. Uh, there are all kinds of physical effects that you can measure that show that consciousness produces effects that are measurable and real. So this is part of, in my mind, this is one of the steps of how we can get our science to grow up 
and start to include consciousness. And uh, so the next, and this also feeds in with the afterlife, because the problem with Western science is we're still in this old materialistic mindset that goes back to Isaac Newton, that the, the universe is all little billiard balls, and therefore when you die, you're dead. There's nothing left. If, if everything's matter, then when you're dead, what else can exist? But suppose there are forms of energy that aren't included in that, and I believe torsion is one of these forms of energy. The aura around the body, for example, is made of torsion. Uh, and so the, the soul, in my theory, is made of torsion. So it continues on when the physical body dies, and that's where the intelligence and the center of consciousness is. So now you have a, the basis for how life continues. Uh, these little physical bodies we have are just temporary uh, for these lifetimes we have in the physical dimension. But we have this energy form that exists in a higher dimension that continues on, and it's really the center of who we really are. So I'm kind of giving you a synopsis <laughs> of the of the whole book there. But no, I appreciate that. I, I really do. Dr. Claude Swanson is our guest tonight. We've got about ninety seconds before we go to break, and you said a lot there, Dr. Swanson, in regards to what happens and how the energy carries over when we pass. We're going to go more in depth with that, but continuing quickly here with one final question before we go to break. There are a number of scientists who believe that that we can't go the life after death route because that would, you know, give credence to the idea that the religious folk and their folklore, if we want to call it that, would be would be fa would be proven real. Is there a tie in between the two? Well, there is. I mean, that that's not a very good reason not to not not to accept something. I I mean, you have to go where the data takes you. You have to look at the data and, and go where it takes you. Religions have grown up over the millennia because of experiences. Uh, even though they have many different religions in the world, there are lots of commonalities among them. And when you start investigating what really happens in the afterlife, you see that there is a basis that every religion has differences and they have peculiarities. So they're not all exactly the same, but there are a lot of similarities. And uh, the research, to me, tends to back up some of those broad outlines. All right. I'm going to get you to leave it right there for now because we're going to step out for a break here at the bottom of the hour. Dr. Claude Swanson is our guest tonight. His book, Science of the Soul, The Afterlife and the Shift. We're going to learn more about this. All night long on Spaced Out Radio. Stay tuned. Hey, space travelers. This is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. From the heartlands of Canada to beards around the world, we know how to take care of you. Fill your follicles with the Mighty Moose Beard Oil. All our oils and balms are handmade and 100% natural ingredients because we care about your beard. And hey, use the promo code SOR2019 and get your Mighty Moose Beard Oil today. You can check us out on our website, MightyMooseBeard.com. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. 
adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. Move over, brother, and let me own Saturday night. This is Rich Giordano, and I'm inviting you to tune on in to Spaced Out Saturday starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, 12 a.m. Eastern, where I'm going to bust open the lids on everything paranormal. Why? Because we want answers, and I'm the guy who's going to deliver those answers to you. Join the chat rooms, and we'll see you this Saturday. Just be there. No, really. Hey everybody, the SOR Space Travelers is open. For just five bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members-only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. Hello, everyone. This is Ryan Stacy from the Experiencer Support Association, otherwise known as TESA. We're glad to team up with Spaced Out Radio to help investigate your experiences on the SOR Sightline Report. Together, we'll investigate the strange sightings and occurrences you've had. We're looking for answers just like you. So fill out a Sightline's report on the Spaced Out Radio website, and let's figure out what's going on together. If you like it hot, real hot, then heat up your meals with Bumblefoot Hot Sauce. Get your Bumblefoot Hot Sauce today. The sauce, Bumblelicious, and the 4 million Scoville unit, Bumble f- we're going in hot, real hot, coming out even hotter. Keep the milk nearby. And tantalize your taste buds tonight. Bumblefoot Hot Sauce, available now at kajans.com. Cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is the place to be, open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes, it's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver, the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Hello, Space Travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month. And follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at YouTube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye! Are you looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. Our audience is proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. So for more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. At spacedoutradio.com, we are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at spacedoutradio.com today.
Welcome back to the second half hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Great to have you with us. Reminder to all of you that if you've missed portions of this show or others, you can check out our free archives at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website, spacedoutradio.com, got a plethora of features for you there. You can go check it on out while listening to the show. Dr. Claude Swanson is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. He's got a great book out, Science of the Soul, The Afterlife and the Shift. Doc, welcome back. Great. Thank you, Dave. Um, yeah, can, can I just throw in there that um, I, the, the best way to find my book is go to my website, um, which is synchronizeduniverse.com, or to email me directly at claudeswanson at gmail.com, or claudeswanson at gmail.com. Um, I've been, haven't really put it on Amazon yet because I'm, uh, when, when you sell through Amazon, they don't let you know who's buying your book. I mean, I still have to fulfill the orders, but I never get the contact information. So I'm trying to do it this way. So I'll have more direct connection oh, with cool. the readers. So, uh, if, Absolutely. if people will take that extra step, I would really appreciate it. Oh, I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. Right before the break, we were talking about the science behind what is going on. And you do believe that there is something happening when a person dies. What happens? Well, we have a lot of we have a lot of first person accounts of what happens. Uh, the way Western scientists uh, you know have become aware of this in recent years is through the near death experience, where people in, in many cases actually do die. They're clinically dead, sometimes for twenty, thirty minutes, sometimes even longer. Uh, and what they they described is that their consciousness continues the entire time, um, and um, they often they they all, they always go out of body. They find themselves floating outside of the physical body, looking back at it, uh, like Daniel Brinkley said. He looked at back at his body after he had died from a lightning strike, and he was disappointed that he thought he was handsomer than that. <laughs> But but the realization that you get is that your consciousness, your yourself, the part of you that sees the world and thinks and is the center of who you are, is not attached to that physical body. It it can look at it from outside, and um, typically at that point, uh, you start to a shift begins to occur. Uh, it can occur in different ways, but sometimes it occurs with the opening up of a tunnel, and um, you'll be aware of uh, being transported down the tunnel uh, into an, another realm, a different dimension, if you like, where there's light, and there are beings, and there are beings who, uh, some of whom you know from your, your family, your past life, there are some who are guides, and they help usher you into this other dimension, um, which is the next, which we call heaven, is the next next realm after the afterlife. Um, and there are a whole series of steps that people often describe going through. Um, if 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 you're going to come back, if you're not really not really dead, or your your death is something that you have chosen to step back from, which happens in some cases, in the near-death cases, um, that's as far as you get. But if you go further, then you get inducted into the afterlife, and there are uh, uh, meeting places, there are hospitals where energetic damage, suppose you had a very traumatic life, uh, lots of damage to your uh, etheric body, the, a lot of damage emotionally, things like that. There may be some repairs and some healing that you have to go through. Um, but all of this is a system to help you to adjust to the frequencies of this new dimension that you're now conscious of. And um, I'll step back just for one second. Uh, what I find... Oh, what I described in my first book, 
the, which is called the synchronized universe, I, I came up with this, this idea, this model, this theory for how the paranormal happens. And you, it helps a lot because in many, many cases, um, you find that matter, what we think of as solid, impenetrable matter, is not that important. People can pass right through it. There are lots and lots of examples where people walk through walls or they pass through objects. Uh, the Chinese uh, did experiments with gifted young people who have special energy. They sort of filter them out. They call them the EH, EHF program. These kids are kind of psychically gifted kids. And they put them in a room and give them samples like a, a bottle that's taped up that has some beans inside of it. Then the bottle is now inside a box and the box is taped up and it's sealed. They hand this whole thing to the kid and they ask the kid to get the beans out of the bottle. And the kids in many cases were able to teleport the beans out of the bottle. They didn't have to tear anything apart or remove any tape. The beans just floated right through these physical barriers. And so that's just one example that what we think of as matter that's solid and impenetrable actually is not. There is a, another property to it where things can pass through other things. Uh, and the afterlife is of the same sort that when you're in the afterlife, things are real to you there. Just like right here in the physical world, things are real to us. If there's a cup on the table or a, a, you, know, you, you stub your toe or something, it's all solid because the forces interact. But in my synchronized universe theory, you can shift the frequencies. Uh, every, every object that you interact with that you consider to be real has a certain frequency and it's interacting in a synchronized way with other objects in that, quote, universe that you call the real. And, and being, having synchronized frequencies, they see each other, they exchange forces, they feel each other, and they say, you're real, I'm real. But you can shift the frequency and turn off that interaction force so that now the forces miss each other. And now you can go right through matter and the things that seemed solid before uh, no longer seem solid. And that seems to be a key principle in understanding the afterlife. And I'll give you just one other example, a man who, who died, um, I guess of old age uh, in England uh, and, and had come back and was speaking through a, a medium and I'll describe how that happened uh, uh, later on. In, in my book I have many, many examples like this but he was he was in his chair in his living room and he died. And a, as he died then he floats out of body and he can see his body sitting back there slumped down in the chair. Uh, his family realized he died uh, they called the doctor to come. They, they took him away, took away his body. And then he said, uh, now I'm still here in this room because he didn't know how to explain what was going on because he didn't have any training for what to expect when he died. But his consciousness was still totally alive. Uh, and so he said, well, so he sat down in the chair because now it was empty. His body was gone. So he sat down in the chair now in, in his spirit form. And as he sat there, he said he noticed the fireplace started to fade away. It started to dissolve. And he could start to see fields, meadows th through the walls. The walls just went away, and the surroundings all changed. Uh, his, he was becoming defased. He was phasing out of the physical reality world that he had known. He was becoming in phase with another world. Um, and so, and this is what the whole process of dying appears to involve, that as we shift frequencies, we become in phase with another world, another dimension, if you like. And the rules are somewhat different in that dimension. Uh, and that's one of the levels of the afterlife. Um, I did lots and lots of research on um, 
what we can learn about at those different levels. Um, and one of the things that they all say is that the mind is much more powerful than we realize. And that in this physical world, it's kind of slowed down. So we think of this as being a materialistic world. But in the afterlife, the mind is much more powerful and can manifest things just by thinking about them. And because of that, uh, there's a separation, a splitting, a sorting between different types of individuals, different types of souls, because if you were in the same, in, in the company of another individual who had a very negative personality, but was able to manifest anything he thought of instantly, it would be a very unpleasant situation. So that beings of similar mindset are tend to be sorted out in different dimensions and different, different layers in this afterlife. So as a result, if you're a nice person and you're kind and loving, you find yourself in a, in a, in a region or, or a dimension with other beings of very similar attitude, and it's very pleasant. <laughs> uh, and uh, that's just one level of the afterlife. But um, one of the things that became apparent uh, from studying this, and it's hard to give credit in, in a short conversation. My book, as you know, is 800 pages long. It's a, it's a four-pound book. Uh, has a couple thousand references, uh, and so it's based on lots and lots of information. But what you discover is that essentially the the soul, our souls are immortal. Our souls keep on going, and they these physical bodies are just vehicles that we take on as a way to have a human experience. Uh, to be able to interact with people in a certain way, but then uh, and we can learn certain less lessons from that. But the entire process of heaven and a reincarnation and rebirth is an education process by which our soul can learn lessons, become more refined, uh, learn to be more loving, learn to be more uh, accepting of others, um, and it's sort of it's a process by which we grow up and become more fitted to the higher planes. So there's a whole sequence of dimensions and planes uh, in this afterlife region, and we're just kind of aware of the lowest one or two, but there are many higher than this. Uh, so that, that's just for starters. But there's a lot, there's a lot to this, and um, I can give some experimental examples. If you'd like to, of why, yeah, we yeah, let's run with it. Stuff if you'd like. Yeah, we got about we got about okay. nine minutes. Let's do it. We got about nine minutes. Let's do okay. it. Okay. Well, well, there's lots of <clears throat> when you're a scientist, you know, you're kind of expected to do experiments and have devices and make measurements and things like that. And it's harder when you're dealing with a subject where we're kind of taught that hey, there's no matter there. <laughs> it's all it's all nothing it's nothing it's just ephemeral so how do you prove anything how do you relate it to science so you have to you'd like to have some experiments and so there are a few things that i found that you can uh, point to right away one is in the out of body experience uh, when someone does go out of body uh, they can prove where they were whether where their consciousness was at different times when they're out of body. Uh, one set of experiments that were, was done uh, back in the 70s uh, involved a man who was very good going out of body. Uh, the scientist was Carlos Osis, had a laboratory all set up with a, uh, a seal, a chamber that had all kinds of detectors around it to detect magnetic disturbances and vibrations and all sorts of things. And then the subject, whose name was Alex Tanaus, was strapped down to a chair, um, you know, a couple hundred feet away in a different room in the laboratory and being monitored, but he would go out of body. So his out of body form, his astral body, would, would float off into this sealed room that had this special chamber with all the instruments. Inside that chamber, there was a device that would, that would, uh, display images. It would display different configurations and images, and Alex was asked to describe what he saw. So 
Alex is strapped down a couple hundred feet away in a different room, but his out-of-body form is able to look in this chamber and see the images that are being formed. When he could describe them accurately, they found that the instruments around the chamber were going crazy. They were detecting anomalous energies that were present. Okay, his astral body caused these energies to be detected and, and then set off the uh, detectors. Um, I mean, that's just one example of how this astral body uh, that we have, our soul body, uh, has physical manifestations. Another one is the famous experiments of Dr. McDougall, uh, who uh, found that by weighing his patients when they were dying, he found that when they, at the moment that they died, they lost about 21 grams of weight. And that, again, is this astral body, the soul body, leaving their physical body. Um, but those are, are just a couple of things. Um, one of the, the more powerful kinds of experiments I came across happens in seances, when you have a powerful medium. Now, a medium is somebody who has a special talent of interacting with the afterlife, with the dead. Uh, but so, And the, we're familiar with mediums like the TV shows who telepathically can hear what a spirit is saying, and people are skeptical of those, and sometimes for good reason, sometimes not. But there are other kinds of mediums uh, called physical mediums that generate a special energy called ectoplasm. And this has been debunked and attacked over the years because mediums typically had to work in absolute darkness because ectoplasm is destroyed by light. But in recent years, we've developed very um, high-speed film, a very sensitive infrared film, and infrared uh, digital cameras, and now we can photograph ectoplasm in the middle of a seance. And that's one of the breakthroughs in the past few years, that when when a medium, one of these individuals, goes into a light trance, this energy, this ectoplasm, will emerge from the body, and it appears to be in a form that's a half in the physical and half in the spiritual dimension. So the spirits are able to interact with it, but we can also see it because it's in our dimension. And so this has been the basis for a lot of spirit phenomena over the years. And uh, I came across a man from South Africa who had some profound experiences of this type and have some photographs in my book of this type. But this energy appears to use torsion. This is my theory that it uses physical cells of the body, combining them with torsion, which is a non-physical energy, and makes this ectoplasm, which then can make a spirit visible. And you take photographs of it, you can feel it, uh, and there's a lot of experiments that can be done with it. Another thing that can be done with ectoplasm is uh, some individuals uh, make it into a voice box, a box that sits uh, attaches to the larynx and enables them to create the spirit voices of individuals who have passed away. But they have seances, and those voices come back. Uh, and you know, any skeptic is entitled, of course, to say, well, it's ventriloquism, or you have somebody else there making the voice up. Those, those have all been tested out. Uh, for example, a man who's never traveled outside of the country can have a seance, and voices will appear which speak ten different languages, uh, speak languages that the medium has no knowledge of. They can answer questions that are particular to uh, some bereaved family member who lost their son uh, in World War I, and the son will come through speaking his own voice, knowing things that nobody else knows, and carrying on conversations with his parents in real time uh, in uh, these seances. This is called direct voice. And uh, one of the great um, experts at that was called Leslie Flint. There are hundreds of recordings of Leslie Flint 
in seances where these voices come through and communicate and there are there are libraries of information available so that's just one one just one small snippet there were Nobel Prize winners like Charles Richet who studied this energy back in the 20s and 30s uh, these are real scientific subjects and they're really important phenomena that give us uh, evidence that the spirit world is real and that can communicate with us in certain circumstances. So in my book, I went through all of those sources and studied them and analyzed them as well as everything else to try to, from t like 10 different types of phenomena, 10 different types of evidence of the afterlife from different perspectives, reincarnation, um, all kinds of things. Um, to get a, a, a well-rounded picture for what it looks like uh, the world of the afterlife is really all about. So I'll just <laughs> stop it there. It's it's hard it's hard to con yeah. condense a, a big book into a small conversation, but that's the general idea anyway. We have about a minute and a bit here before we got to go to break at the top of the hour. Dr. Claude Swanson is our guest tonight. With the travels that people are having when they go on these journeys, are they always seeing people? Is it always of the light, or is there darkness involved as well? What what? Uh, there are different levels in the afterlife, and uh, most of the accounts say that, that there are one or two levels at the bottom that are rather unpleasant that you don't really want to be in and people who have the antisocial behavior or some negative personalities may find themselves down there after death for some time. We would call them hell or something like hell, but it's not like the Christian hell in the sense that um, there's no hot coals uh, and you're not there forever. Uh, but it's a matter of, but, but you do suffer. Uh, because you're with other people of the same vibration. And that's where the unpleasantness comes from, is that they do to you what you've been doing to them. Uh, but as you learn your lessons over time, uh, and, and, and this is where prayer really does have a power. This is what they all say, that prayer does have an effect. Um, and you can get out. You, can, you, you graduate. So these are just just like the first grade in school, you know, you're not there forever. You learn your lessons and you move up to right. second grade. And that's Dr. much like the Dr. whole afterlife system. Dr. Swanson, I'm going to get you to hold on right there. So we're going to go to break at the top of the hour. Dr. Claude Swanson is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. More with your questions about life after death coming up. For the price of one cup of coffee a month, you can become an SOR Space Traveler. The Space Travelers Club is a place where you can interact with other listeners, either live during the show or on our great forum. We want your stories, pictures, comments, and ideas. You'll get live video streams, exclusive content, and be a part of our newsletter. Stay in touch with everything SOR. The Space Travelers Club is just 5 bucks a month at spacedoutradio.com. I'm feeling a little spicy tonight. What to do? What to do? Why not get Bumblefoot? Four million Scoville units of pure hard rock. Bumblefoot hot sauces come in three flavors. The burning Bumblef***. Tone it down a bit with Bumblelicious and throw the sauce on everything. Spice it up. Bumble me, baby. Bumblefoot hot sauce. Get it today at kajans.com. This is Amber Beckrude, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we store all of the SOR show archives for free. And as an added bonus, every two weeks, I'm posting brand new content on Cryptid Tales, where I will get into some of the spookier legends and folklore from around the world and tell the stories that go with them. Find us at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio and check out Cryptid Tales today. Drop a comment and let me know what you want to hear. See you there. 
Hi there, this is Geraldine Orozco from San Francisco's Bay Area Meditation. I invite you to join me the first Tuesday of every month with Dave Scott for Spaced Out Radio's The Spiritual You. In this fast-paced world we live in, it's time for you to take some time for you. We'll cover every possible subject from powerful meditation to healing techniques to your own intuition and spirituality. So come join us for The Spiritual You. Are you an experiencer of something strange that can't be explained? Do you want help finding out what's going on? I'm Ryan Stacy, head of the Experiencer Support Association, otherwise known as TESA. We've teamed up with Spaced Out Radio to investigate cases filled out in the SOR Sightlines Report. We are independent and there's no cost to what we do. All we need is your experience. Let's find out what's happening together on the SOR Sightlines Report. Get your horns up with me on Spaced Out Radio. This is Ron Bumblefoot Thaw. Come tune in to SOR where you can hear me rock out with Little Brother is Watching, the official theme song of Spaced Out Radio. And then come on over to Bumblefoot.com where you can find out about my tour schedule, my music, and everything else. Bumblefoot.com keeps you up to date on what I'm doing and the best way to stay in touch with my music and music camps. Sign up for my newsletter at Bumblefoot.com and remember, Little Brother is Watching. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. Space Travelers, it's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month and follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye! A little bit of science, a little bit of skepticism. Add a dash of snark and you have the makings of Spaced Out Sundays with me, Everett Thiel. Together we will look into the reality of the paranormal with an open eye and rational thought. Oh, did I mention there'll be plenty of woo as well? Your time spent with Spaced Out Sundays will make the night even better. The chat rooms are open, 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, right here at spacedoutradio.com. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. The SOR Vault is open for business, and do we have some cool swag for you to pick up? All you have to do is head over to our website and click on the SOR Vault. You have a variety of cool logos to choose from, and put them on anything you want. T-shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee mugs, you name it, we can get it to you. So do your shopping by supporting the store you love. Get your Spaced Out Radio swag at the SOR Vault today. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? you love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Looking for creative ways to get your company out in the public? How about advertising on Spaced Out Radio? Our sales department is waiting to hear from you, and we can work around any budget. From commercial spots to banners to special promotions, there are many opportunities to get your name and product out to our SOR listeners. For a price guide and more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. 
The party is always on at the Moose Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is where you want to be when visiting Canada's west coast. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose cranks up the rock while serving some of the best rated food in the city. The menu starts at $6.95. Why party anywhere else in Vancouver when the Moose is right there? Get your horns up and rock with the Moose, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. We are scouring the world for the most intriguing stories of your day. Take the time to read up on the SOR Newswire, where our team, led by Captain Shirk, will deliver to you some of the best paranormal and supernatural news, along with some stories that will blow your mind from the weird to the wacky. It's the news outside the news that piques interest, and that's what we're looking to deliver to you. The SOR Newswire, only at spacedoutradio.com. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott. Follow Dave on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Facebook, Spaced Out Radio Show. Hour number two of Spaced Out Radio is underway tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Thank you so much for being with us. We want to say hello to everyone listening in on KDNF AM 1560 in Dangerfield, Texas. UPRN 107.7 FM in New Orleans. In Reedsport, Oregon, KDUN AM 1030. KZFX 93.7 FM in Ridgecrest, California. And WQEE 99.1 FM in Newnan, Georgia. On the digital side, we are on Kingdom of Nye Radio and Revolution Radio. Great to have you with us. Remember, all of our archives are free. Go to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do me the favor. Hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Obsequious. Obsequious is your password. Use it wisely, space travelers, as the clam sets a password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, do a little shopping at the SOR vault, grab a great book from We Read the Night, join the Space Travelers for 5 bucks a month, and Captain Shirk brings you all up to date on the SOR Newswire. Tonight we are talking with author Dr. Claude Swanson. Science of the Soul, the Afterlife, and the Shift can be found on his website, which is synchronizeduniverse.com. Dr. Swanson, welcome back to the show. Uh, thank you very much, Dave. Uh, and if they can't spell synchronized, that's uh, okay. <laughs> uh, my my email is Claude Swanson at gmail dot com, and that'll also work if you have any trouble finding me. Not a but, problem. But the easiest what, what I tend to do is just put my name into Google. If you put Claude Swanson into Google, the website will pop up as about a third or fourth choice or so. So that's easier than than synchronized is, is with a Z and or Z, and uh, as you know, uh, there's uh, <clears throat> different conventions on this continent and the other continents. So anyway, perfect. Anyway, we'll perfect. Any, any, anybody? Yeah. Anyway, look forward to it. I want to get to some audience questions here in our chat rooms, if you don't mind. And we're going yep. to start off with Teresa here. She is asking. Dr. Swanson, what part of the brain controls astral body, and how does it become integrated? The brain has a part to play? Yes? No? Um, yeah, I'm sure it does. I, first of all, <clears throat> I'm, I'm not an expert on everything. <laughs> so so I, I, I've really, I've, I have experimented a little bit with astral travel, but I'm not very adept myself. So I'm not a good person to ask about, um, you know, how practical tips um, to, to me. And then the main thing is that the conscious mind needs to get out of the way. Um, that I typically our conscious mind when it focuses on matter or on specific ideas, typical thinking, typical left brain types of thoughts, it seems to interfere with the ability uh, to enter the consciousness of the, of the astral body. Um, what meditators sometimes say is that, that they are entering their consciousness. I mean, they, they, we have these layers around us, these energy layers that are, that are the aura. 
and there are different vibrations which correspond to how those vibrations interact with different planes of consciousness, and they also connect us to different planes in the afterlife. Um, what what they say is that um, you put your consciousness into that particular plane, and uh, as you enter it more fully, your left brain uh, conscious logical thinking uh, sort of fades away, kind of turns off, and that seems to be one of the keys to entering the out-of-body state. Um, as you know, the Monroe Institute uh, teaches using hemisync tapes uh, to uh, produce certain brainwave patterns uh, in the mind. And one of the first things you do in that process is you relax. You sort of let go of all conscious thought, all worries, anything that's at all cognitive. That's how our whole Western uh, life is spent in the left brain. But you relax and turn all that stuff off and um, so it becomes a, a sort of a state of non-thinking that it is some, seems to be one of the keys to entering the out-of-body state. But um, I'm just not, I'm not very adept at it myself, so I'm probably not very good at giving you detailed um, explanations on that. All right, let's move on to the Space Travelers Club here on our website at spacedoutradio.com. Joey is asking a couple questions. First one, Dr. Swanson, what is your opinion on automatic drawing? Uh, it's it's to- totally real. I mean, automatic writing and automatic drawing, it, it, it can be quite real. It's one of the principal ways that uh, mediums uh, can interact with or inter- interface with the spirit world. Um, I have a few examples uh, in my book, um, there's a, the wonderful uh, case of, of Bly Bond, who uh, was an architect, I guess. He was given the job of trying to uh, discover the original foundations for the Glastonbury Cathedral, which, you know, was a beautiful cathedral that was had been destroyed hundreds of years before, I think by Henry VIII in his feud with the Catholic Church. Um and they were trying to reconstruct certain parts of this uh, uh, church, and uh, he was given the job of of doing that. Uh, but he, for his his approach was, he had a friend who was a captain in the navy, I think, who was a good automatic writer, a very gifted at just would relax. He would go to a slight trance state, and his arm or his hand would begin to move put a pencil in his hand, and he would start to write things. And what would happen is the spirits that he was trying to communicate with would take over his muscles and his arm and his body and would write things that would communicate. And in particular, several messages uh, came in these sessions that were in Latin, and they were said to be from spirits of, of monks who had worked in Glastonbury, uh, at the time before its destruction. And they described in great detail the layout of the foundations. They would even uh, use uh, the pen to draw the foundation patterns. So they were doing exactly the kind of automatic drawing that you're talking about. Um, and uh, it ended up that their information was totally correct. Uh, he found the foundations uh, the, the verification of what they had said w- was completely correct, and he made remarkably rapid progress uh, in successfully reconstructing the old foundation. And now, the, the the British government was quite happy with his success until he told them how he had done it. <laughs> and then they were quite upset that they were using automatic uh, writing to... Uh, to get the information, but it's certainly very real. So anyway, it's just one more form of, of mediumship where where spirits can interact with someone in a telepathic or intuitive way and communicate information. Yeah. All right. His second question, Joey said is, is regarding consciousness where he is asking, are you saying Dr. Swanson, there are, is a difference 
in types of consciousness. Are you referring to what uh, he knows is called phenomenal consciousness that exists beyond human death and is different from access consciousness that exists while we are still bodily alive? Uh, Well, I'm not sure. Uh, Now, those terms I'm not familiar with. Um, I think I think that normal what we think of as normal consciousness, which is of the normal uh, left brain logical way of thinking that most of us interact with each other and live in a normal day. Uh, you can trace that back to brainwave frequencies, and that would be mostly you know, the 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 alpha, the the beta frequencies, the higher frequencies that. Um, are typically involved when we're interacting with matter. Um, but individuals, while they're alive, are still able to uh, reach the deeper brainwave patterns, which are different states of consciousness that correspond to lower um, brainwave frequencies, uh, even while alive, typically involve more of the psychic ability. Uh, experiments that have been done at Princeton Pear Lab and places like that. You know, we have we have these abilities to go out of body, to get information from other locations, uh, and it works much better when you quiet your mind, go into an altered state, so you can access information that's not coming in through your normal senses. Um, so, and that that sounds a little bit like what he's saying but the terms I'm not familiar with. All right. With consciousness, though, this is a key word that has been coming up in, say, the last 18 months specifically in regards to everything from paranormal phenomena to UFO contact and phenomena where we hear of people who are allegedly flying these craft. And I know Grant Cameron on this show has discussed it profusely, that that's where his research is taking him, amongst others. How is consciousness formulated to handle so much of the paranormal? And what are we not seeing as everyday humans with the power of consciousness? Yeah, well, you asked a big question there, for sure. Uh, I mean... The way I, the way I think about it, is that I mean, so much of our Western mindset is is from, is from the point of view of a, of someone looking out a window uh, at the world, and we look at the world out there, uh, and we see events and physical matter and the wind blowing and the things falling and leaves falling and et cetera, et cetera, and we were observing what it's doing and we describe the forces and we think of it, we think of ourselves as being passive observers, just watching. Um, And that's the way Western science is set up. So in that science, there's no place for consciousness. We're just a passive observer, but we know better. We know experimentally that consciousness can affect uh, those events And that's the world we're coming into now. And that's part of what the whole ET contact appears to be uh, teaching us. Um, Over the break, we mentioned Ray Hernandez and the the FREE organization, F-R-E-E, the Edgar Mitchell Foundation, that um, is is also looking at this same issue of trying, of what Ray was told in one of his ET contacts is that all of these different phenomena, the out-of-body experiences, the near-death experiences, um, you know, a variety of different psychic phenomena uh, that, that have a very different appearance, they're all different aspects of this same thing, of consciousness, and that there are different ways of looking at it, and there are ways to help us to begin to understand what it is. So, I mean, I think, to me, that that is the big issue that science has to address. That's kind of what I've been trying to address. The way I think about it, my, my personal theory right now is 
that when we as an, are an individual, one of them, you're describing a person as a consciousness, uh, it's not a point. It's not a single particle. It's a collection of particles and of vibrating systems that all interact with each other. The, say the, the molecules that make up your body, just for starters, uh, there's more than that, but it's a complex system. But there is a way in which they communicate and there's a way in which they integrate their information. They pass it back and forth among themselves. And this is a synchronization. That, that, a part, that a set of particles can be synchronized among itself and make an entity that is therefore able to distinguish the inside, namely itself, versus the outside world, and to interact with the outside world in a certain way. So I, I'm being a little confusing, and I apologize here, but the idea is that there's a synchronization frequency for a consciousness, for an individual. It has a certain synchronization of its own that gives it a uniqueness, and I think that's the key part that's been left out of Western science. When we look at the universe, which also is a synchronized system, we look at it through the lens of our own frequency, of our own synchronization, and that will affect what we see, and that will affect phenomena out there. I think that's why uh, in quantum physics we affect quantum physics by our consciousness because of the synchronization. Um, and we know that certain individuals who are well-trained, like Qigong masters, like great yogis, uh, like some ETs, they have developed this ability to uh, focus their consciousness so that it's synchronized in a very powerful and unique way. And that then can affect the outside world in a powerful and unique way. And I mentioned the Qigong masters who are, who are just you know, one example. We have lots of data uh, of this type. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm right here so, listening. Well, my, my, phone, my phone did a funny vibration then. <laughs> I was worried. Didn't know what that oh, meant. Oh, no worries. Uh, okay, good. Okay, good. So, so, so when people put themselves into a very specific, energetic, highly synchronized state of consciousness, they're able to, ex to exert a more powerful effect on the environment. So that is a strong clue about this, this aspect of consciousness, that it probably involves the synchronization. This is what, when, when you hum, when you do a mantra, when you chant, when you listen to hemisync tapes, you're getting your brain waves into very narrow band, very uh, focused set of vibrations and that is able to exert a stronger influence on the environment. Anyway, that, that's, you, that's can, as far as I've gotten. <laughs> yeah, go no, but, but this brings up some important questions, too, because many people who have had contact with, whether it's the paranormal, aliens, UFOs, whatever you want to call them, they also talk about this telepathic communication that kind of comes along with it. Is that part of the consciousness, or is that something completely different? No, I think it's part of the consciousness. I think that, that these, that the, when I mentioned the synchronized vibrations, I think that when you and another consciousness are able to link certain frequencies, then you can have much more communication. And um, if you look at what a yogi goes through in his training, uh, it, it all involves learning to quiet the mind and to focus the mind, which means instead of having a random jumble of frequencies, the mind, the mind is just wandering all over the place. You learn to control it and quiet it, and you can you can direct certain frequencies. And if you, you and someone else uh, want to communicate uh, by linking up your frequencies, by synchronizing your frequencies, you can get much better access to their thoughts and vice versa. And oftentimes they say that one way of, making that contact is to visualize that person's face. 
but when you visualize that face, you're also putting yourself subconsciously into their frequencies, into their aura, into their personality. So you're you, you're probably linking up on many different frequencies. Telepathically, and, and the other part of uh, go ahead. Yeah, telepathically. Yeah, and and the other part of the other part of this whole issue is is torsion, which I describe in, in volume two, uh, which I think is one of the keys. A uh, torsion is left out of Western physics so far, but the Russians discovered it in the 50s and had done lots of experiments with it. Uh, whenever there are electromagnetic signals, but even in some cases where there are not, uh, there's other energy called torsion, which is a twisting of space-time, uh, they say exists, and it appears to be a key to consciousness and to the aura, and it's probably... That it may be the energy that you're exchanging when you're doing telepathy, for example. Are we getting telepathic messages from the ghosts or spirits or aliens or dogman and Bigfoot like people have said they have received? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That would be torsion too, most likely. Yeah. And that would explain why uh, in the afterlife, why there's methods of communication with the afterlife, because. Uh, even though there's no matter and uh, presumably no electromagnetic uh, sources, maybe, <laughs> um, but torsion would still be uh, very much present. So it may be why uh, mediums, when they receive a message from someone in the spirit world, it's more a torsion telepathic uh, message. Interesting. I mean, uh, we're still, we're, we're still, you know, we're still. Uh, you know, feeling our way here, trying to develop a theory. So I acknowledge that it's not a finished uh, subject. But um, the Russians have done a lot of work on torsion, and um, uh, Kozarev, Nikolai Kozarev, was the original discoverer back in the fifties. And um, a lot of work which they did show that it seems to be really important for consciousness. We only have about 30 seconds here before we have to go to break, and there's so many questions that I, I want to ask you yet in regards to this. In regards to near-death experience, the people that you've talked to, how similar are the stories? we got about 20 seconds. They have a lot, The patterns have a lot of similar structure. There, there's a system. There's a, there are higher beings, and there's a system. And that's the, the bottom line conclusion. It's not random. <laughs> All right. We're going to come right back here right after this break with Dr. Claude Swanson, Science of the Soul, The Afterlife, and The Shift can be found on his website, synchronizeduniverse.com. That's synchronizeduniverse.com. Check it on out. Get your copy. We'll be back with more talk of the afterlife right after this. Hey, everybody. The SOR Space Travelers is open. For just 5 bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members-only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. Space Travelers, it's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month and follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. 
So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. If you like it hot, real hot, then heat up your meals with Bumblefoot Hot Sauce. Get your Bumblefoot Hot Sauce today. The sauce, Bumblelicious, and the 4 million Scoville unit, Bumble. F- We're going in hot, real hot, coming out even hotter. Keep the milk nearby. And tantalize your taste buds tonight. Bumblefoot Hot Sauce, available now at Kajans.com. At spacedoutradio.com, we are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at spacedoutradio.com today. Hey, space travelers, this is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. From the heartlands of Canada to beards around the world, we know how to take care of you. Fill your follicles with the Mighty Moose Beard Oil. All our oils and balms are handmade and 100% natural ingredients because we care about your beard. And hey, use the promo code SOR2019 and get your Mighty Moose Beard Oil today. You can check us out on our website, MightyMooseBeard.com. Are you looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. Our audience is proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. For more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. Cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is the place to be, open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes, it's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver, the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Finish off your weekend and kick off your new week with me, Everett Themer, right here on Spaced Out Sundays. I'm going to bring you great guests, a little bit of snark, and plenty of information to think about. But don't worry, there's going to be plenty of woo as well. We are going to hit everything in the paranormal and supernatural, including the odd psychic Sundays. So tune us in on Sunday, 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, right here at spacedoutradio.com. Move over, brother! And let me own Saturday night. This is Rich Giordano, and I'm inviting you to tune on in to Spaced Out Saturday starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, 12 a.m. Eastern, where I'm going to bust open the lids on everything paranormal. Why? Because we want answers, and I'm the guy who's going to deliver those answers to you. Join the chat rooms, and we'll see you this Saturday. Just be there. No, really. 
Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. We pass the halfway point of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. I think I need some new light bulbs around here. I'm down to four of seven. I just haven't made it to the hardware store yet. I'll have to do that soon. Hey, I want to remind all of you that if you want to check out our free archives, you can do so at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do me the favor. Hit that subscribe button. I'd appreciate that. Our website is spaced out radio.com. We got a plethora of features for you. So I'll let you click on that while you're listening to the show. Dr. Claude Swanson is our guest tonight on spaced out radio. Synchronized universe.com is his website site where you can also find all of his books including his latest science of the soul the afterlife and the shift dr swanson welcome back to spaced out radio thank you dave great to be here oh we're having a lot of fun tonight in regards to everything that we're talking about the near-death experience where people claim to meet up with family members or meet up with loved ones who have passed on uh, in the in the past how real is that experience, and how do we know that that isn't just an imaginary marker because, you know, we're going through that that afterlife video of everything that's happened in our lives before we finally check out? Well, uh, I have a whole chapter in my book about that. Um, there have been lots and lots of people who have studied it. it um, there have been thousands and thousands of cases, as I'm sure you know, over the years with resuscitation technology <clears throat> having developed where people can be brought back from uh, from the dead, essentially. Uh, we have a lot, lot of cases where people go gone through this. Uh, one type of evidence that it's real is the information that they get. Um, there's one case I quote um, in my book of a man who uh, had a near-death experience, and while he was dead, uh, he was told by the spirits uh, that he had his sister, who he had not seen for, I think, like 40 or 50 years, that they were separated uh, as children, uh, and, and he was given her address, told where to find her, and she was halfway around the world in Australia, they gave him the correct address and he was revived. <clears throat> he was able to look her up and make contact with her. So that's just one, one little example of how the information that you're, you're given uh, can be verified. Um, let's see this, the, the biggest scientifically, probably the biggest uh, piece of evidence is that people are changed. People are not the same after they come back from the experience. Uh, their statistical studies have been made to show that their belief system has changed, their psychic ability has changed, their awareness of the universe has changed. Uh, there are many things you can measure about them that are different. Uh, perhaps the biggest one is that they're much more altruistic now than they were before. The great example there is um, Daniel Brinkley, who wrote a best-selling book uh, many years ago, and uh, about his uh, the first of his I think it was three actually three near death experiences he had. But the first one, he was struck by lightning, killed, dead for twenty eight minutes, had the sheet over his head, off to the morgue. Uh, you know, he was he was dead as far as the hospital was concerned. And then he miraculously revived on his own. Um, and um, 
but um, he uh, it, it changed him. It changed him in a profound way. He said that he had always been a bully uh, as a kid. Uh, he'd grown up not well liked, being mean to people. Uh, when he became a teenager, he joined uh, the military and um, was sent to, I think, Vietnam as a sniper for the CIA, is what he says. And he killed people as as a as a living, and he was good at it. And um, in fact, that one of his buddies from that era was talking to him over the phone the night that the lightning struck uh, his little town in South Carolina. And uh, he probably wouldn't have stayed on the phone except his buddy was taunting him to be afraid of lightning. So he had to show how tough he was, but not hanging up. And that's when the lightning struck. But he was a tough guy. And uh, when he had his first near-death experience, he realized that we are all immortal souls. He realized how much love he felt for everyone else and how how connected we are. And when he came back, uh, he really tried to live his life completely differently. He went to everyone he'd ever hurt. He apologized to them. A lot of them took the opportunity to beat him up, <laughs> to get even with him for what he'd done to them. Um, but he became a pacifist and a, a very kind person. He even started an organization doing hospice to uh, watch over those going through the dying process. Um, so he, he was a completely different person. And this pattern you see over and over again in people who have near-death experiences. Uh, basically, they understand that this is physical life, this physical body that we're so used to is not who we are. It's only a small part of who we are. And that the soul and the higher spiritual world is a real, real thing. It's who we really are. And if you can see people as souls, then you think of them differently and you treat them differently. I mean, if somebody cuts you off in traffic, for example, uh, your normal reaction might be to get even with them, give them the finger, you know, say something mean to them, or be aggressive, whatever. But if you can see that that person is an immortal soul who is just here on the earth struggling to, to pass third grade, in his soul's evolution and he's just going through things just like we are, then you can be more forgiving and more understanding. And I think that's one of the uh, understandings that seems to come in the near death experience. So uh, and there's a lot to it. And uh, I have a lot of data in that chapter in my book about, about those things. But um, it's, it's, it's quite dramatic. Uh, you know, one of the pioneers <clears throat> Of, uh, of near-death uh, experiences is Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. Uh, she was one of the original uh, scientists who made this uh, subject well-known, and uh, she had been working in Germany, I guess, um, even before World War II, I think, and working with uh, people who were dying, and, and she discovered that in that state, they just want to talk. I mean, they know they're dying. Uh, and usually, they just want to talk to people and explain what they're going through. And that she found that when she would listen to them, she was able to make a connection with them that was much deeper than anything they had ever experienced before. And that helped her to understand what the death process was about. And so her writings about on death and dying uh, were one of the pioneering uh, subjects. <clears throat> um, but um, anyways, it, it, she said the first time she ever became convinced that some of this stuff was real was when she met uh, one of her clients, a lady named Mrs. Schwartz, who had died in the hospital 10 months before and had a near-death experience and then came back and then died again and had, had conveyed to her 
what she saw during the time she was dead. That she floated around over her body. She watched the machines. She heard the doctors. She told uh, Elizabeth Kubler Ross what the doctors had said. She could quote all of their conversations in detail. Um, so the vividness of her awareness, even in situations where she shouldn't have been able to hear or see anything, was pretty powerful. Uh, the the coup de grace in the whole story is that 10 months after she died the last time, uh, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross came out to the elevator and she was troubled. She was very discouraged because nobody was being supportive of her in her, uh, her, her work about death and dying. And she was on the verge of giving up. And there was a figure, a person, waiting at the elevator. And the lady seemed to know her. And so she started talking to her and realized this lady was only half transparent. She wasn't fully solid. But she began walking with Cooper Ross down to her office. It was Mrs. Schwartz. She said she had to come back because she had to tell Cooper Ross not to quit what she was doing was so important. And Mrs. Schwartz, even though she'd been dead 10 months, went into Kubler Ross's office with her, accepted a pen, a pencil, and wrote down in her spirit hand somehow a message to confirm this was all real. So <laughs> I know this is wild stuff, but Elizabeth Kubler Ross was an, a doctor, you know, a very uh, profound uh pioneer in this whole subject and there's lots and lots of examples like this that when you start reading them over you realize that these phenomena are real that's amazing how any type of spirit can leave some sort of graphic mark even if it's just noise, it, it really is phenomenal. But there are so many people who go through heart transplants, who go through traumatic experiences, they die, and they don't recall anything. How come only certain people, or very few people in the grand scheme of things, actually have that NDE while others don't? And, uh, good question. I don't. I don't have. I don't have the answer to that. I, I think some people may. It's like your dreams. You wake up and then you've forgotten your dreams. And people think they didn't dream, but maybe they did. They just forgot. I mean, the, the mind is funny that way, and it may not may be blocking us from remembering uh, some of, of, of those memories um, in the same way that. Uh, they say that like when when you're when you're born, um, we don't remember any past life, um, and yet under hypnosis, people often are able to recall past lives and even verify in in some ways that they've had past lives. Um, so hypnosis often can help uh, break through those barriers of forgetfulness. But um, you know it, 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 the other question that you had earlier was why some people have negative uh, uh, near-death experiences. And to me, the answer there probably is because there are these different levels in the afterlife. And depending upon the nature of that person's, where they are in their own development, they may have ended up in one of those negative layers uh, in their in their near-death experience. So um, that could explain the uh, PMH Atwater, I think it is, who says that about one out of seven near-death experiences are negative. And it may be coincidence, but there are typically said to be about seven uh, different layers in the afterlife. So it might be that they ended up in that, that one bad layer. Um, that's, that's a possibility. So for those who are not having that experience or those who are having a negative experience, is that all on the way they lived their life or is that based on what their mind is telling them? What's your best guess? It's some of each, I think. 
is some of each. Um, there is um, there there's very uh, adept. Uh, I want to call him a yogi. He's a he's a, a spiritual teacher, uh, Michael Tamura, who um, remembers many many of his past lives, probably hundreds. Um, he can describe exactly in detail what his previous past life before being born in this life uh, was. He was a, a young girl in uh, Hiroshima, in Japan, and he said he was incarnated there so that he would, when the bomb went off, he was present, as well as his family, who were all converted into spirit form. And he said he was there to help them get through it because you feel very disoriented as a spirit when something like that happens. Uh, he's tended to be a, a teacher and a trainer um, over many, many lifetimes. Um, so I forget what your question was. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, just in, in regards to the experiences people are having, all right. Some people who claim to oh, have well, good sorry. experiences, okay, or yeah. or they're not rem- they're not remembering no, I, what yeah, they've I, gone I, through. Yeah, no, I, I got it. I, what I wanted to say, I, I thank you, Dave. Uh, what I wanted to say is that in one of Michael's experiences, he talks about going through this. It's like a testing period where he felt like this is in in the afterlife. Okay. Um, he he was being assaulted by a series of images, very frightening images. Uh, you could say they were beings, uh, threatening uh, things that would you know, create fear in anyone. And it was he realized it was a test, and he said at that point, because of his training, he went into a state of meditation. I think he called it a body of glass where everything could just pass through and he was unaffected by it. He knew it had no power. He knew it was only an illusion that was there to test him, to create the fear. And so it was his emotions that would determine how he reacted uh, to the experience. Um, And so the right response was to allow it to pass through you, stay centered, they calm and let it just go on through. And I think that a lot of these frightening images uh, in the afterlife, like in the in the Book of the Dead, for example, there are many stories of uh, scary images there that are not that different from some of the afterlife accounts that some people have described. And I think the point is to stay centered and stay calm. And uh, if you do can do that then you won't be caught up in those energies. So that's, that's all I can suggest there. Earlier in the show, you stated that, you know, there are levels to the soul and, and almost like we're graduating up and up. At least that's the goal of the soul. Does that mean you also believe in the theory of reincarnation? Yes. Yeah, this to me there's overwhelming evidence for it. If you start digging into it, and I've I have a whole chapter on that in my book as well. Uh, as you know, um, well, <clears throat> one 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 example. I mean, all we really know about these things are examples, but there's there's so much. Uh, I I grew up in Virginia, and one of the world's experts. Uh, in reincarnation was Ian Stevenson, a professor at the University of Virginia, who spent his whole life researching reincarnation. He went to uh, India, for example, and found uh, thousands of thousands of cases where children at age three and four, when they first begin talking, they will remember the past life. It'll be quite vivid to them, and they, they have language now. They can communicate, and they will describe what their past life was. And so there's, he investigated, he checked out many, many cases where they gave such specific information. 
he could track down the village of the past life, the, the family, and which family member it had been in the past life. Uh, the person who he was investigating would match up with the family members, uh, the method of death they remembered. There were so many things that were correlated um, to show that it's not imagination, uh, that it's factual. Uh, one amusing thing that happened for me is that when my first book came out, Synchronized Universe, uh, I was staying with my parents in Virginia. The very first box of books came from the publisher. I was kind of excited. Uh, it was delivered to uh, their house in Gretna, Virginia, by a man who had been, who I'd known all of my life. He was a deacon in our Methodist church, as well as the UPS delivery man, and he also ran the filling station. Um, and he came to the door and brought the box of books. And I was kind of nervous because, being the Bible Belt, I didn't know how people would feel about a book about the paranormal. Uh, I was nervous about that. And uh, he, we started talking. And he said when he first saw the the box, he, he thought it said poison, but it said Posidia, which is the company. And uh, he said, well, what's the book about? And I said, well, it's about the paranormal. And I was a little guarded. I wasn't sure how he would react. He said, paranormal? Is that kind of like reincarnation? Like, uh, like my like past life regression. And he could have knocked me over when he said that. And I said, yeah, that's part of it. And he said, well, the preacher, actually the preacher of the church I had gone to, uh, did past life regressions. And he used to hypnotize people and hypnotize 100 people in my town and took them into past lives. One of them was his wife. And when they hypnotized her, she began speaking fluent German, which she'd never been taught in this lifetime. And she went into a past life in the 1800s in Germany when she was a little girl named Gretchen who died at age 16. And Ian Stevenson came down to the University of Virginia and started a five-year research program with her. Uh, he had other language experts come in historians, uh, they were able to track down her life, verify that neither she nor her husband had any education in German, and yet she could speak fluent German, have conversations while under hypnosis. When she was brought out of, out of hypnosis, she thought they were just making it all up. She couldn't believe it. Um, so that kind of ability to speak a language you have no knowledge of is, is very strong evidence that past lives are real that if she's been taken back to a time when she only spoke German. And um, so that's a, right. the kind of examples that exist. Right. Dr. Claude Swanson is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. We have him for another 30 minutes here before we get to the SOR Newswire and the thought of the day. Hour three of the mighty SOR coming up right after this. For the price of one cup of coffee a month, you can become an SOR Space Traveler. The Space Travelers Club is a place where you can interact with other listeners, either live during the show or on our great forum. We want your stories, pictures, comments, and ideas. You'll get live video streams, exclusive content, and be a part of our newsletter. Stay in touch with everything SOR. The Space Travelers Club is just 5 bucks a month at spacedoutradio.com. Hello, space Travelers, it's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month and follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye. 
Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. We are scouring the world for the most intriguing stories of your day. Take the time to read up on the SOR Newswire, where our team, led by Captain Shirk, will deliver to you some of the best paranormal and supernatural news, along with some stories that will blow your mind from the weird to the wacky. It's the news outside the news that piques interest, and that's what we're looking to deliver to you. The SOR Newswire, only at spacedoutradio.com. I'm feeling a little spicy tonight. What to do? What to do? Why not get Bumblefoot? Four million Scoville units of pure hard rock. Bumblefoot hot sauces come in three flavors. The burning bumble. Tone it down a bit with Bumblelicious and throw the sauce on everything. Spicing up. Bumble me, baby. Bumblefoot hot sauce. Get it today at kajans.com. The SOR Vault is open for business, and do we have some cool swag for you to pick up. All you have to do is head over to our website and click on the SOR Vault. You have a variety of cool logos to choose from, and put them on anything you want. T-shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee mugs, you name it, we can get it to you. So do your shopping by supporting the story you love. Get your Spaced Out Radio swag at the SOR Vault today. A little bit of science? A little bit of skepticism. Add a dash of snark and you have the makings of Spaced Out Sundays with me, Everett Thiele. Together we will look into the reality of the paranormal with an open eye and rational thought. Oh, did I mention there'll be plenty of woo as well? Your time spent with Spaced Out Sundays will make the night even better. The chat rooms are open, 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, right here at spacedoutradio.com. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. Hello everyone, this is Ryan Stacy from the Experiencer Support Association, otherwise known as TESA. We're glad to team up with Spaced Out Radio to help investigate your experiences on the SOR Sightline Report. Together, we'll investigate the strange sightings and occurrences you've had. We're looking for answers just like you. So fill out a Sightline's report on the Spaced Out Radio website and let's figure out what's going on together. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. Hey, space travelers, this is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you'd know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. 
Move over, brother, and let me own Saturday night. This is Rich Giordano, and I'm inviting you to tune on in to Spaced Out Saturday starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, 12 a.m. Eastern, where I'm going to bust open the lids on everything paranormal. Why? Because we want answers, and I'm the guy who's going to deliver those answers to you. Join the chat rooms, and we'll see you this Saturday. Just be there. No, really. The party is always on at the Moose Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is where you want to be when visiting Canada's west coast. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose cranks up the rock while serving some of the best-rated food in the city. The menu starts at $6.95. Why party anywhere else in Vancouver when the Moose is right there? Get your horns up and rock with the Moose, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Looking for creative ways to get your company out in the public? How about advertising on Spaced Out Radio? Our sales department is waiting to hear from you, and we can work around any budget. From commercial spots to banners to special promotions, there are many opportunities to get your name and product out to our SOR listeners. For a price guide and more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. you like to connect with us head to spacedoutradio.com for all your latest show info now back to dave scott and sor we're underway in the third and final hour of spaced out radio tonight i am your host dave scott thank you so much for joining us I want to say hello to everyone listening in on wqee 99.1 fm in noon in georgia kzfx 93.7 fm in ridgecrest california uprn 107.7 fm in new orleans kdnf am 1560 in dangerfield texas and in reedsport oregon kdun AM 1030. On the digital side, we're thankful to broadcast on Kingdom of Nye Radio and Revolution Radio. Great to have you with us. Remember, all of our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Obsequious. Obsequious is your password. Use it wisely, space travelers, as a clam sets a password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, do a little shopping at the SOR vault. You can grab a great book from We Read the Night. Join the space travelers, just like PBR is going to. It's just five bucks a month. And... Captain Shirk has you all up to date on the SOR Newswire. For the final time tonight, we bring in Dr. Claude Swanson. He's the author of the book, Science of the Soul, The Afterlife and the Shift. It can all be found on his website, which is synchronizeduniverse.com. Doc, I want to bring you on back here because I want to ask you about EVPs. This is a very controversial subject in the paranormal as to whether or not we're actually getting communication of voice from the other side. Uh, yeah, and uh, I, I, to me, there's very strong evidence that we are. Uh, <clears throat> I'll just give you a real quick synopsis of what I learned in doing my, I have a whole chapter on that subject as well as I do on most of the major uh, types of evidence for the afterlife. <clears throat> you know, the, um, I guess it started back when Thomas Edison was um, developing electronics back in the early part of the last century. Uh, he he was a, he suspected that it might be possible to communicate with the afterlife because um, I guess he he must have been an, enough of a, of a of a psychic himself to sense that um, that these things were real and it's just a matter of the right kind of detector. But um, he never succeeded, as far as I know, in his lifetime. Uh, developing devices, but soon after, other electronic devices did begin picking up signals that indicated that spirits were communicating. Uh, There were two Catholic priests in the late 40s who were repairing an early wire uh, tape recorder and uh, were working with it, and uh, the, the wire kept breaking, and one of them 
said something that probably a priest is not supposed to say. He took a little minor curse, <laughs> call, calling upon his father, who had passed away, <clears throat> to help him uh, with this problem. And when they turned the recorder back on, his father's voice came over the recorder. Uh, and basically the, the father's voice says, well, uh, uh, you know, I'm here, and of course I will help you. And then he called him by his pet nickname, Zucchini, which is his nickname as a child that nobody else knew. And that was on the recording. And the priests were kind of frightened because they were afraid maybe that they were communicating with uh, spirits and that wasn't supposed to be something they were doing. So they asked, asked, they asked the Pope whether what they did was okay. <clears throat> and the Pope's response was, well, you know, anything that gives evidence of the afterlife is, is a good thing. Um, and the Catholic Church actually began investigating EVP pretty soon after that. Uh, in the late, in, I guess in the late 60s, uh, a couple of Europeans discovered uh, the same thing, that tape recorders uh, could record voices even when no one was present, and even if the microphone were removed. <clears throat> and um, one of the first of these uh, uh, people uh, had been recording bird songs, uh, which tend to be higher frequency. And he came back and played back the, the, the tape, and he heard voices on the tape having a conversation while he'd been recording. And uh, this became a kind of a big thing in Europe uh, for a while. Um, I guess a, a route of a, Constantine Rautova recorded like 65,000 of these um, snippets of conversations in many different languages. Uh, and wrote a book about it. So it became a big subject in the 60s and 70s uh, when some research was done uh, in the 70s. They found that these recordings could be made even when the laboratory was highly shielded so that there was no way that they were picking up stray radio waves or anything like that. There was something coming from inside the enclosure. Uh, after research went further, uh, one of them had a, a dog that had been present in some of their experiments, and the dog always pricked up his ears when when something when, when a spirit voice came came over that later they detected. But the dog seemed to be detecting it before they did, and their their, their clue was well maybe he could pick up higher frequencies, and they found out sure enough that's true. So later on, uh, detectors were built that go up to higher frequencies, uh, up to uh, 20 or 30 kilohertz, and they found they work even better than um, than conventional tape recorders. So there's a whole lot of science that came came along uh, to sort of verify that this whole phenomenon is real, um, and it's gone on since then as well. So it, it appears to be a genuine method of communication. Um, I, I have a theory for how it happens that came out of this research also, because the other manifestation of spirits that is reported oftentimes and has been photographed, as you I'm sure have heard or your listeners have talked about, are orbs that, even though you can have orbs that are false orbs that are just due to uh, dust or raindrops or insects and things like that, but there are also real orbs that are paranormal in origin that you can distinguish from the others, and these orbs are capable of making an audible sound, uh, and this has been something that's been known about in ancient cultures for a long time. If you go to the Hawaiian culture, they talk about uh, different, different forms of the soul or the spirit. And one of them uh, is, uh, they, they, they call it the Uhane, which is the soul that can speak. And it is described as a small sphere that's able to make a sound that you can hear. It has a tiny little high-pitched voice. Uh, Sylvia Brown, the famous psychic, when she was uh, seven, <clears throat> was combing her hair in front of the mirror. And she said one of these little orbs floated up 
to her right ear and began speaking in a high-pitched, squeaky voice. And she freaked out. She'd never seen such a thing before. And her mother uh, heard about it and calmed her down and said, don't worry, dear, it's just your grandmother. <laughs> uh, but but um, the Native Americans uh, have a healing ceremony where uh, the, uh, the medicine man will... Uh, tie himself up and sit in the middle of a, a of the hut of the lodge, and the entire uh, tribe will sit around him in a circle and chant uh, when they're working on healing a member of the tribe. And it's quite dark in the room, but as they begin, and this is the way it was described by uh, a non Native American a friend of mine who was at one of these, but as they as they're chanting and um, these little lights begin to appear circling around the outer perimeter over the heads of the uh, members of the tribe and they're making little high-pitched voices and these are their ancestors. These ancestors come to these ceremonies to contribute their energy to help with the healing of the tribe member. Um, and so these are just a few examples that this orb, this little spherical appearance um, that is seen in so many uh, ghost encounters appears to be what is making the high-pitched voice that's recorded in the um, tape recorder. Um, a, a friend of mine uh, who's a ghost hunter, uh, Christopher Moon in Colorado, uh, first told me about this because he was uh, watching orbs uh, in the basement of a house he'd grown up in using the night shot video camera, which is an um, infrared camera. It can see in total darkness, um, and it's using the infrared part of the spectrum. And they tend to show up orbs pretty well, and he can see orbs moving around in the room, even in total darkness. He said he would notice every so often one of them would fly into his tape recorder and then fly out again. And when he checked the tape, he found that afterwards there was a message, an audio message that was recorded on the tape. So what this led me to then is the theory that these orbs vibrating are what are making the sounds that are being recorded by the tape recorders and by the EVP devices. So we have a whole mechanism here for how the spirit world can actually come into our physical and leave messages for us. And in my book, I also describe a bunch of different accounts where people uh, in the spirit uh, domain describe visiting the physical. And when they do, they visit in the form of an orb. So this appears to be a pretty... Uh, well-documented phenomenon is one way we can make a contact with the spirit world. Um, now, there's, there's also some people like uh, uh, um, George Meek, who was a, a famous ghost researcher, who understood what I'm saying and understood that this is a real form of communication, but he wanted to contact spirits that were at a higher level, that were above just the the, the, the the lower vibration level of the ones who still are able to contact the earth plane. He wanted to speak to really high spirits who might have some profound wisdom. And he worked for many years on a microwave system to be able to contact higher dimensions. But it's a, it's a real phenomenon. The whole idea of EB, EBP appears to be quite real and uh, some pretty spectacular successes there. And, Anyway, I have a whole chapter on that. We only got about nine minutes left with you tonight, and, and I want to get in a question here from Twitter from Greco, who is saying, Dr. Swanson, you said you had evidence, and based on your conclusion on evidence, he's not really catching on to you saying anything, in his opinion. Examples aren't pushing the science any. He says he needs to be convinced, and people like him need to be convinced that he's just not 
that there's things out there. How do you take someone who is in wonderment of all of this? And this is me asking now. How do you take this in with people who are in wonderment and try and get them to understand that this phenomena is real and that it is going on on a daily basis with every human soul that passes away? Because let's face it, people are dying every second of the day. Yeah, well, I mean, you can only do so much. Uh, I spent 10 years writing this book. I didn't really have a preconception when I started. Um, There's hundreds and hundreds of books and papers that are read and digested and correlated that are in my book. I have a couple thousand references, hundreds of figures, you know, I'm trying my best to put together the evidence. Uh, you can't, I don't expect, and I'm not going to try, to convince somebody in a conversation or with some words or waving my hands, you know, to change their mind about anything. I would say that anybody who's really serious needs to do the work, needs to do the research. Um, buy my book or buy somebody else's book or do your research, however you feel that you want to go about it. Um, but there's a huge amount of data and, um, I've got photographs of, 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 of <laughs> there's, there's one, there's one example that, that if, if you ever had this opportunity, this would convince you. Now this, this person obviously is not going to have this opportunity because they're probably never going to, is never going to come, come about, about, but, um, these, uh, this ectoplasm that I mentioned before, uh, that some uh, mediums have been able to produce it, not very many, but some. And when they produce it, then the spirits are able to uh, enter the room and cover their bodies with it. And when they do, then they become visible. Uh, they become visible to anybody in the room uh, and um, you can they, they, you can touch them, they can touch you, uh, the, they can make a voice, they can make physical manifestations that can be documented. And I have a quote from one lady who went to one of these seances. She'd never been to any such thing before in her entire life. She described how frightened she was of uh, going to this thing because, um, you know, meeting a dead person, that sounds pretty creepy. Um, and yet, when the seance began, uh, up from this pile of goo, of this ectoplasm, this little old lady manifests who walks around the room and shakes their hands and looks at them in the eye and speaks to them. This was the departed elder sister of the medium her name was Aunt Ag, and it's just a delightful account of what it was like for people in the experience. When you see a being like that, it, you realize that the physical body is not all there is, that there is a, a, a whole spirit world. There's a, these spirit forms that are able to cover themselves with ectoplasm. That's part of who we really are. That's that's part of the information of the soul body that continues after uh, after physical death. This is just a tiny piece of who we really are. Uh, so anyway, I, without being able to share some experiences like that with someone, I would just say do your research, keep an open mind, um, read my book if you are willing to to risk 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 the outlay for it or do something else, but at least go to the website. Um, changing your mind about something you believed all your life is not an easy thing. You have to start off an open mind, and then you have to do some work. Um, that's all I can suggest. we got just under four minutes left with you tonight. When you look at people in the medical field who are now studying this, Dr. Eben Alexander came out a few years ago with a couple of books after his NDE in 2008. We see a lot more medical doctors and nurses now 
coming into the fold saying that there is something very strange happening in operating rooms around the world, especially in North America, with this phenomena. Do you think it's just a matter of time now before modern medicine starts to accept the near-death experience? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I mean, Abbott Alexander himself talks about I mean, he was a you know a neurosurgeon, and uh, before his near death experience, he would have said exactly the same thing as your previous uh, person uh, said. You know, he was a skeptic. He didn't believe any of it. In fact, not only did not not believe it, but he had very very well practiced pat answers for people who who did report. And the he could brush them off, you know, hallucinations or whatever else, and just ignore them. Uh, so, and once you have your own built-in defense mechanism like that, then you can pretty much bounce off any uh, explanations or examples that come your way. You're ready to just reject them. But then, when Evan himself went through it, when he himself uh, lost most of his mind. Of his ability to speak and remember for the, the, the time of his infection, um, it was a profound experience. And when he when he realized after he recovered that the girl on the butterfly, the butterfly wings, who had shown up in the midst of the depths of his uh, deepest coma when he was lost to the world, that that woman, that beautiful woman who had shown up there to guide him back and to give him hope was the sister that he had never met in, in regular real life. And yet she, her face was the face that he saw. Uh, so this kind of confirmation tells us you know, it's something far beyond imagination, far beyond, you know, it, it's something very deep and very real. Um, so it takes a profound experience probably to open up someone to question or to uh, to change their mind. Um, so just if you're serious about the truth, you'll just uh, start looking and go, go where it takes you. Dr. Swanson, I want to say thank you so much for Coming on Spaced Out Radio tonight, we've got about 40 seconds left with you. Do me a favor, tell our audience where they can find your book and more information on your work. Yep. The website is synchronizeduniverse.com. And synchronized is S-Y-N-C-H-R-O-N-I-Z-E-D. So the Americans spell it with a Z, the English with an S. So you have to put the Z in there, synchronizeduniverse.com. Or just put my name, Claude Swanson, into Google and do a search, and the website will pop up as the third or fourth option. That's the easiest way. Or you can email me directly, uh, Claude Swanson at gmail.com, uh, and, and purchase the books there. But you'll learn more about the books if you go to the website, Synchronized Universe, have other book, other information there about the books as well. Perfect. Dr. Swanson, thank you so much for coming on tonight. Really appreciate you taking the time and schooling us a little bit about near-death studies. Coming up next on the SOR Newswire, we got some great stories. Donut Gate. Yeah, we got Donut Gate north of the border. Impeachment? No, we got Donut Gate up here. The SOR Newswire and the thought of the day coming on up. If you like it hot, real hot, then heat up your meals with Bumblefoot Hot Sauce. Get your Bumblefoot hot sauce today. The sauce, Bumblelicious, and the 4 million Scoville unit, Bumble, we're going in hot, real hot, coming out even hotter. Keep the milk nearby. And tantalize your taste buds tonight. Bumblefoot hot sauce, available now at kajons.com. Hello, space travelers. It's me again, Carl. 
Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month. And follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye! Move over, brother, and let me own Saturday night. This is Rich Giordano, and I'm inviting you to tune on in to Spaced Out Saturday starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, 12 a.m. Eastern, where I'm going to bust open the lids on everything paranormal. Why? Because we want answers, and I'm the guy who's going to deliver those answers to you. Join the chat rooms, and we'll see you this Saturday. Just be there. No, really. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. A little bit of science, a little bit of skepticism. Add a dash of snark and you have the makings of Spaced Out Sundays with me, Everett Thiele. Together we will look into the reality of the paranormal with an open eye and rational thought. Oh, did I mention there'll be plenty of woo as well? Your time spent with Spaced Out Sundays will make the night even better. The chat rooms are open, 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, right here at spacedoutradio.com. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. Are you looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. Our audience is proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. For more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. Hey Spaced Out Radio fans, it's John Rezik, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. Our goal is to make the life of veterans, first responders, and those with rare medical conditions 10% happier. We do this by donating one grant item, ranging from dance to therapy programs to prosthetic limbs, to those who need it most. To contribute to Spaced Out Radio's official charity, head over to ChiveCharities.org and become a donor today. Hey everybody, the SOR Space Travelers is open. For just five bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members-only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. Cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. 
The Moose Vancouver is the place to be, open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes, it's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver, the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. At spacedoutradio.com, we are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at spacedoutradio.com today. Third, we're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Great to have you with us. Reminder, if you've missed most of this show or others, you can check out our free archives at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, do a little shopping at the SOR vault, grab a great book from We Read the Night. Join the space travelers for five bucks a month, and Captain Shirk has you all up to date on the SOR Newswire. The news is always changing, which is why we bring you the SOR Newswire at the back end of every show where we get to the weird, the wacky, and sometimes even about donuts. Oh, yes. While all the American eyes are on the impeachment, up here in Canada, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is getting ripped a new one for paying 47 bucks for a 12-pack of donuts. Yes. A local bakery in Winnipeg, Manitoba, is now fighting back against online criticism after Prime Minister Trudeau made an unscheduled visit this past week. Yeah, he posted online that he stopped in at the Winnipeg Bakery O Donuts to pick up tasty treats during a three-day Liberal Cabinet retreat during his time there in the city. Oh, Donuts replied to Trudeau's online post, thanking the PM, adding, pretty sure Health Canada would agree everything is okay in moderation. Well, the public really, really didn't like this. Canadians from coast to coast to coast quickly attacked their prime minister for his decision to choose a pricier bakery rather than a fast food joint like Tim Hortons. So you just don't mess with Tim Hortons in Canada. Sure, they changed their coffee. Some people think it sucks now. But when it comes to donuts, you just don't mess with Timmy's. So here's some of the, uh, some of the comments. Because, like, Trudeau has, like, oh, at least five boxes of donuts at 47 bucks. So people are now wondering, are we paying for this as taxpayers? Are they paying for donuts? Did he put it on the company card? Or did he put, put, put it, uh, pay for it out of his pocket? Yeah. So Timmy's Donuts, by the way, if you want to buy a dozen, is like 9 bucks compared to 47 So Mama Rooster on Twitter, Donuts brought to you by the Canadian taxpayers. Curious 2019, another company your foundation has shares in, perhaps? Brian, I guess Tim's isn't good enough at 10 bucks a dozen. Nothing says I'm middle class than $47 a dozen donuts. Just another elitist selfie moment. Another person. Like most Albertans, I do have to watch our dollar at Costco. I bought food that was on sale and would last. I stretch my money to provide nutritional meals for my family, and the idea of a treat for us all is at the bottom of our list. I can't tell you how much it hurts to see this entitlement. Oh, they are upset. Very upset. 
Yes. That is what is happening. O'Donuts promptly replied with a lengthy list of social media posts explaining the importance of supporting local businesses. From ingredients to benefit plans for their employees, O'Donuts listed off the reasons people should visit their store. They are locally owned, employ 30 staff who enjoy breaks, the option of joining a benefit plan with local butter, local eggs, local flour. Our donuts are made fresh daily. We do our best to pay a living wage and never pay minimum wage. Yes, donuts owner Amanda Kinden says, I just received an email on Sunday for an order, which I responded normally to. They ended up placing an order on the website, so it was sort of out of my hands, and then I got a message from the staff that it was for the Prime Minister. We had no idea he was coming. It was a dark, cold Monday morning, and one of his staffers opened the door, and he walked in. What are we supposed to do? Exactly. Exactly. That's the debate up here in Canada right now. Let's head over to the United States, where an Indiana man who illegally rappelled into the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone National Park this month before being pulled out by rescuers says he was searching for hidden treasure. 55-year-old Dave Christensen is convinced the canyon holds the famed Forest Fen treasure, a multi-million dollar cache of gold and jewels that Santa Fe art dealer and author Forest Fen reportedly hid some time ago. Christensen took a scouting trip into Yellowstone just after Christmas, loaded up with supplies back in Indiana, then snowmobiled into the park again on January 6th. Sixth, Armed with a rope, harness, helmet, and other climbing gear, he tied off on a railing at a popular overlook and proceeded to climb down to the Yellowstone River, more than 850 feet below. Yellowstone National Park rangers and search and rescue personnel were ultimately called to the scene, and it looks like it took them several hours to bring Christensen back to safety. He is now facing misdemeanor criminal charges for the incident. However... Christensen says his attempt was to save others who may be injured or perish in attempts to discover the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. He sought to make the case in an email to Yellowstone Superintendent Cam Shawley following the incident, laying out why he believes Fenn's gold is in the canyon. I'm not a quack nor have blind lust for hidden treasures, he wrote. I am sending this to you so you can analyze the information, hopefully understand its validity, and thus potentially circumvent a mad, mad world or a rat race for searchers in the near future or spring when Yellowstone opens to wheeled vehicles. Yeah, Forrest Fenn coming into the news again. In Japan, a man has been arrested for allegedly abandoning his father's cremated ashes in a subway station restroom. When Hiroaki... Hishijima's divorced father passed away in September last year. Officials in Tokyo Shinjuku Ward handed him the cremation of his body. Yeah, that's when he went and picked up his father's remains in November for a popular, pop, proper burial ceremony, but feared his mother would get angry if he brought the ashes home. Yeah, abandoning bones in a public place other than a ceremony is or cemetery, pardon me, is punishable by a fine and up to three years in prison. And while abandoning remains is rare, the issue of what to do with a deceased loved one or relative is a growing sore point for many Japanese amid a steadily aging population and skyrocketing prices for cemetery plots. Deaths in Japan hit a post-war record high with 1.376 million in 2019, with a natural population decline of 512,000, the highest ever. While public cemeteries often have long waiting lists, tombstones at private ones can cost up to $4,000 to multiple millions, with the location and the type of tombstone bumping up prices, according to former funeral director Yusuke Wada. A plot in Kamakura Cemetery will cost you the same as buying a luxurious car, such as a Lexus, he said. Oh, that's getting expensive to die. Don't die in Japan. Way too expensive. A New Hampshire father killed an apparently rabid coyote with his bare hands after it attacked his family. Ian O'Reilly had been out with a walk with his wife and their three children, two sons, aged two and four, and their six-year-old daughter, on a trail near Jude's Pond between the towns of Exeter and Kensington on Monday morning. O'Reilly told uh, said uh, to the media that the coyote came out of nowhere and attacked his youngest son, but he was able to kick it away from the child before the animal could do much harm. But the animal was in attack mode, he said, and he really had no choice but to kill it to protect his family. The animal bit him on the chest and arm before eventually 
He choked it to death. We tried to de-escalate the situation by kicking at it and trying to get away from us and shoot away. That did not work. It was much the aggressor, he says. There is no interest in it going away. Ultimately, I had to make the decision to become the aggressor and continually jumped on it, attacked it, and was able to get it to the ground. Running on adrenaline, O'Reilly said he used his hands to cover the coyote's snout so it would stop attacking him and eventually managed to kill the animal after a 10-minute struggle. Ultimately, one hand is on the windpipe and one hand is on the snout. It did the trick, he said. It was very much in attack mode. There wasn't much of a choice, unfortunately. Good thing is, he's all right. His children and his wife are all right as well. All right, let us continue, shall we? Here we go. Police in Australia shared footage of a clumsy thief wheeling a pilfered dishwasher away from an under construction home and dropping the appliance on the street. Oh, that's going to leave a mark. South Australia police said on their Facebook page that three underwent constru- under construction homes were burglarized on Monday in Wallaroo, and the culprit was caught on camera using a dolly to carry a Vento dishwasher out of one of the homes. The security camera footage shows the man wheeling the dishwasher out of the home and down a sidewalk. The man goes over a curb into the road, and the dishwasher falls off the dolly, landing on its side on the road. Police say they are working to identify the subject. Subject. Boy, we're cruising today in the news. I think I may have missed a story here somewhere. All right, let's move on. <laughs> okay, I don't know if an umbrella, if you live in Florida, I don't know if an umbrella is going to help you here, okay? I really don't. Because the National Weather Service earlier today warned people in South Florida of the possibility of falling iguanas in advance of cold weather. This isn't something we usually forecast, but don't see, be surprised if you see iguanas falling from the trees tonight as lows drop into the 30s and 40s. The Miami National Weather Service office wrote in a tweet, I got to tell you, I would be happy with 30s and 40s right now. We were like 36 degrees Fahrenheit today, 2 degrees Celsius. You know how happy that made me? Oh, it was almost T-shirt weather here. Anyways, the National Weather Service noted that iguanas are cold-blooded animals and slow down or become immobile when the weather drops below 40 degrees. Iguanas often rest and take shelter in trees and can potentially fall from their perches while in this state. They may fall from trees, but they are not dead. So, I don't know, just what do you do? Do you, like, throw them to the side? Since they're not dead, they're like frozen. Weird. Very weird. I wonder if we did forget a story. I better go look. I better go look. It's like we're way ahead of time here. Way ahead of time. Yeah, donuts? We got donuts. All right, I got to figure out here. got to go back into the newswire. On our website, spacedoutradio.com. Have to. I know I'm forgetting one. Captain Shirk's probably just like, oh, David, how could you do such a thing? How could you do that? It's terrible. Terrible. Okay, we got the Tokyo man. We got Killer Coyote guy. Oh, here's one. Yeah, this is the one I forgot. Yeah, let's get to it. Apparently, there's a new species of shark. Not like I'm going to find out because I don't really go in the ocean. Yeah. So, yeah, this this new shark is actually part of the family of sharks that have evolved to walk on land, though they're much smaller, cuter, and less ravenous for human flesh than their counterparts on film. I'm calling BS on that. These walking sharks belong to the shark family, of course. I'm not going to pronounce the scientific name because it's useless, and I will get it wrong. Hemiskelium, I guess, which is the newest lineage of sharks on Earth. Yeah, according to the marine and freshwater research, using specially adapted fins, the sharks are able to pull themselves across reefs in their tropical Indo-Australian habitat, even when they are not submerged in water. They're incredibly cute little animals and are really more like a gecko walking around than a shark, said co-author Mark Erdman, a coral reef ecologist. 
Yeah, they're not big swimmers. Okay, much like me. All right, so we're we're getting somewhere here. Yeah, and uh, what else does he say? Oh, yeah, they stay on the same reef where they are born. They are much like homebodies. While these ambu- ambulatory skills have been documented in previous studies, Erdman and his colleagues shed new light on the family's evolutionary origins by analyzing DNA from the nine currently recognized species of hemiskelium. The team conducted a molecular phylogenic analysis of sharks, which means they use DNA sequencing to figure out the shark's genetic relationship to each other and a wider shark lineage. Either way, they're man killers. They're only a couple feet long, if that, but they are man killers. Okay, finally here, a Florida man who was wanted for allegedly selling meth tried to avoid arrest by holding his breath as he hid underwater in a pond while deputies searched nearby. Daniel Christopher Booth of McClenny, Florida, was at work on Wednesday morning at a solar power plant in Suwannee County. But when a sheriff's deputy arrived at the plant, Booth decided to make a run for it. He saw a nearby pond, decided he would try to evade arrest by hiding underwater. But there was no escape from canine units deployed by the law enforcement officials who quickly tracked him down. Booth didn't take into account that he's not a fish, doesn't have gills, and had to come up for air and was quickly captured. The sheriff's office posted a photo showing a deputy escorting a handcuffed and shirtless Booth out of the wooded area near the pond. On their Facebook page, the sheriff's office announced the arrest and added the hashtags, action movies are not real life, hashtag not Rambo, hashtag mistakes were made, hashtag that's n- not how any of this works, and hashtag breathing is not optional. <laughs> like, who does that? Who absolutely does that? What about the alligators? There's alligators all over Florida. You don't go in the water, you're food. Sooner go to jail than be food for an alligator. Thought of the Dave happens every night at this time. Where we wait for Marty to get a clown picture on Twitter at hashtag spaced out radio. Then we ask a question on our Facebook page and read your responses on the air. What do you think happens in a near death experience? Alan, let's get to it. You almost die. Oh, wow. That's cool, Alan. Bill Cardwell, number one. Holding up a number one for you, Bill. Oxygen starvation. Little Ronnie Moniak, the Ukrainian watermelon. Something that is beyond words. I rarely tell people what happened, as I do not need to debate or convince naysayers. I do not fear death. This is but a shell of what we are. The life we live is short. It is meant for growth and expansion of self. It has ups and downs only with one guarantee. You will move on one day. Believe what you want. Some will not believe. Others' faith will guide them. The truth and the answers are not always obvious. The answers can be simple. It is our nature to complicate it do the best you can never stop learning keep the faith as for me it's all real he says brian first you go into the area between heaven and earth then you may interact with some of your dealer departed individuals as well as some angelic beings you feel this tremendous love in the time and space do not matter they determine based on the criteria in the book of life or of What you have that you should not be there at this time, it is not your time, so they send you back to Earth. Finally, you wake. You're back in your body. You need to change your pants as you've just crapped yourself, and you need to spend the rest of your life wishing and wanting to get back to that very moment called death. Captain Shirk, I believe in the soul which occupies your body, especially or escapes momentarily, has its maybe yes, maybe no experience, and then after it gets the no answer, returns to your shell. Chris, you almost die, then a doctor saves you. Cameron, cross that off my bucket list, May 6, 2005. It was wild. Nicole, an awakening for most, a reconnect for me. Daryl, you become closer to Source, the god of gods. Robert, you nearly die. Nikki, over in the UK. Hi, Nikki. 
I could hear something, something whispering in my ears like a million people talking all at once. Every time I had my eyes closed before I nearly died, I could see horrible things. I don't recall the bit in between dead and alive, just that bit. I'd have loved to have experienced a full, proper experience. On Twitter, let's see where they are. Let's see. From Paranormal Radio. One or many layers of the onion skin which separates this world from the next is temporarily removed. How many layers is determined by the extent and nature of the trauma? Bart of the Dave from the great Bart L. Bart Bart Bowie. You nearly die. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Nathan. I think our minds branch out and communicate with what is beyond the here and now, but we come back somehow since we do not die totally. And Illuminati gets the final word. Probably shouldn't read this. This is my resident troll on Twitter. Not a fan of this guy or girl, whoever he is or she is. Says, my astral body leaves my physical body, and I'm immediately relieved that I no longer have to worry about tuning into Spaced Out Radio or hearing Goof on Radio with Rich Giordano. But then I get pulled back. Disappointment sets in. That is awesome. That is that is high high quality snark right there. Can't stand the guy. He is a troll, but that's funny. That is funny. Thank you for everybody on Twitter and Facebook for participating in the Thought of the Day. We'll do it all again tomorrow. Thank you to Captain Shirk for coming on in and putting together a fantastic SOR Newswire tonight. Claps for you, Captain Shirk. Claps for you. And to Dr. Claude Swanson for coming on in talking about the near-death experiences website. Once again, synchronizeuniverse.com. We got Mr. Ron Bumblefoot Thaw rocking in the background with Little Brother is watching. Bumblefoot is the official music of Spaced Out Radio, rocking us in and out of every single show. Get your horns up for the guitar god himself. Special thanks to everybody sitting in at home, at work, in your cars, wherever you may be, in our chat rooms on Spreaker, Revolution Radio, LGAB, Facebook. The SOR Space Travelers Club on our website, and everybody on Twitter snarking away at hashtag Spaced Out Radio. I know you're out there somewhere. Remember, this show is copyright by Spaced Out Radio and SOR Media Ventures Limited. Thank you so much for sharing your night with us, because together, my friends, we're watching. We own the night, Mr. Bumblefoot. We need a favor. We need you to take us home. I know you're out there somewhere watching me. Hey, we'll talk to you tomorrow night. Stephanie Burke joins us, Intuitive Paranormal. We're going to have a fun night. See you then. Goodbye.